All right, friends. It's time for another installment of my very best content. My tier lists. This time, we're going to revisit uh, one of my favorite topics. Video games, something that I sadly know way, way, way too much about. I'm basically the guy on the left-hand side of this cartoon here. The guy in the Atlas shirt, that's me. Sadly, my brain is full of trivia about video games, and I, sometimes I wonder, what if I had used all that brain hard drive space for something that was actually productive instead of, like, all this dumb, useless knowledge that I have about video games? I could have, like invented the internet and put someone on the moon if I had used all this brain capacity for something productive. So I said, well, at least I can do something with it by turning it into a tier list because, uh, you know, that's what I do. I take all the useless crap in my brain and I put it into a tier list and uh, that's going to be my legacy in the world. Well, he didn't really contribute anything productive to society, but he made some moderately amusing tier lists. That's what it's going to say on my tombstone. So I figured, you know what? Why not do it? Why not turn my useless knowledge of video games into a tier list? And so that's where we'll start. And also thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. It's a dark fantasy RPG that's free to play on Android, iOS, and PC. And what I personally like about the game is all the customization. Every champion has multiple slots for gear and each piece of that gear can be upgraded in different ways. And what I have been thinking about is which raid champions I would want to have over for my dinner party to celebrate celebrate Raid's fourth anniversary. And I think my dinner party would be all about the goth girls. Zavia, Ray, Lydia, and of course, Lua. And with it being the game's fourth anniversary, there is a ton to be excited about. I'm talking about dedicated offers, free gifts, promo codes, events, and a brand new fusion event where you guys can get your hands on an anniversary themed legendary champion. You'll also be able to take a trip down memory lane with a recap video of your stats in Raid. Oh, and for the Amazon Prime members who just got Genbo, keep an eye out for the next drop with some very very powerful savage gear. It's available from March 2nd until March 30th. But my friends, that is not all. New players, use my link in the description of this video or scan the QR code on screen right now and you will get a free starter pack with this very cool in-game loot. I have played a lot of games in my lifetime, but there's a lot of games I haven't played, so there's gonna be some that I don't know. You're right here. Middle-aged men complaining on the internet about video games make bank. It's true. So this is the next step towards me reinventing myself as one of those guys who uh, sits on uh, Twitch with like a wall of Funko Pops behind him, screaming about how woke SJWs ruin Star Wars and Magic the Gathering. That's what's next for me. Uh, so where should we start? Let's start with the Elder Scrolls. We'll start with Skyrim. I have played a lot of fucking Skyrim. Not in a while. But back when this came out, I don't know how many... How many hours did I put into Skyrim? It's horrifying to think about. I gotta say though, I suck. It's the truth. I play the stealthy Khajiit Archer, which is like, I feel like that's the weakest way to play Skyrim. So I will admit that I suck at the game and uh, I play it like a baby. You know, I'm okay with that. I accept it. I'm a baby gamer. It's true. Everyone plays the stealth Archer and, and so do I. I'm trash, but I did enjoy the game. However, it has its flaws, specifically... It's kind of dumbed down. If you've played like Oblivion or certainly Morrowind, um, I did enjoy the game a lot. Graphically, of course, much better than the other ones in the Elder Scrolls series, but I would say it's an A tier game. You know, actually, I'm going to say B tier. It is very good, but would I want to play it now? I don't think I would. Like, it's not actually that enjoyable to play now. It's not bad by any means, but it's, you know, it's a little bit more shallow than I think uh than i think it felt at the time so we'll compare that to uh oblivion the previous game in the elder scrolls series of course whatever remembers oblivion for is the uh <laughs> the mind-bogglingly realistic graphics on the npc faces <laughs> the finest moment of oblivion so okay Maybe a little bit rough around the edges. Obviously, not the strongest point, but I gotta say that overall, Oblivion, I would say, is the better game because it's less dumbed down. The quests are better. I mean, the, the combat sucks. It's true. The scaling also sucks about Oblivion. That's a big issue because the world scales to your level. That kind of sucks. And uh, But it's all made up for with the incredibly lifelike, stunning graphics on the NPCs. I gotta say... 
I think the best part of Oblivion, which is probably the highlight of the entire Elder Scrolls series, I would say is the Dark Brotherhood quest in Oblivion. I think that's the single best quest line in the whole series. You know, it's not the world's best game by any means, but as far as Elder Scrolls games go, I would say Oblivion's probably the best because Morrowind has the best mechanics, but it's kind of janky and broken in so many other ways. Like if they were to remake Morrowind, I think that would be an S tier game. Yeah, Skyrim is a six, I think so. It's a six, maybe a seven. It's not bad, but it's not as great as it seemed at the time. Oblivion is the better game. Yep, I said it. It's not a perfect game, but I did like Oblivion. I think it's a better game. I'll give it A tier. But when it comes to Bethesda open world games, we all know what the king is, right? We all know what the king is. The king of Bethesda games, you know it. Fallout New Vegas, it's the best in the series. It's janky as hell, but it's great. Like the bugs actually make it better. That's the great thing about it. Fallout New Vegas is such a great game that the glitches actually make it better. Like when you fall through the floor or like you shoot someone and they just sit there on the ground, like jerking around and spinning or something like that. It actually, it's more entertaining. It's charming. You know, the jankiness is charming. So in my book, no finer game. You can still play it today and it's still fun. It looks like shit. The graphics are terrible. It's ugly as hell. It's broken in so many different ways, but you can still play it. It's great. I mean, the quest, I forget the name of it, but the quest where you have to like put the hat on the guy to get him assassinated in front of the dinosaur. Cause like he's the guy that kidnapped your wife into slavery, I think, right? That's like one of the best quests in like the whole thing in any of the Bethesda games. And then when you can uh, crucify Benny and he's like, you sick vindictive fuck. Just the quest design in Fallout New Vegas is what makes it great. One of the best games of all time, I would say. Incredible. S tier game. Fallout New Vegas is S tier. I won't hear anything else. Incredible game, 10 out of 10. How about, you know, I like open world games, even though they're kind of repetitive, you know, they kind of all sort of do the same thing, but I like open world games a lot. How about Horizon Zero Dawn? Any indies? Yes, I like, I like indie games. We'll talk about indie games. Horizon Zero Dawn, I gotta say, I really wanted to like it because it's a cool setting. I like the jungle thing and the post-apocalyptic blah, blah, blah. Got great reviews and uh, yeah, it's kind of meh. There's nothing wrong with it. Everything in the game is well done, but it's just another one of these games where you just like run around the map, like chasing quest markers and like collecting seven of these. And you know, it's just kind of, eh. yeah, it's boring. There's nothing wrong with it but there's nothing right with it either. And so I don't know why it got so many awards and everyone said it's like this most amazing game and, you know, it's like the next big thing. And I was like, okay, cool, I'll check it out. Eh. But is the story great? It has no personality. I don't think it has any personality. Yeah, it's like an MMO, only it's not online. Exactly. I just can't get into those type of games. Not a bad game, but uh, I would say very, to me, very disappointing, very underwhelming for me personally. I definitely didn't hate it, but uh, I didn't love it either. So I would say, would I rather play Horizon Zero Dawn or Skyrim? I think I'd rather play Skyrim, even though it's 10 years old. Maybe that's nostalgia. I don't know, but I would like Horizon Zero Dawn's kind of kind of not great in my opinion. But I'll tell you what is great. One of the best games of all time, and I will hear... Nothing to contradict me on this. I will hear nothing else. One of the absolute best games of all time. Saints Row 3. Absolutely incredible. Stunning masterpiece. Stunning. If you haven't played it, you have to. It is great. No, Saints Row 2 is not better. Saints Row 3 is the best. Because Saints Row 3, if you haven't played it, is absolutely absurd. It's like a parody of every open world game. It's like a self parody basically of like GTA, but it's better in every way. It's hilarious. It's ridiculous. Saints Row 4 is a little bit too ridiculous. Saints Row 2 isn't ridiculous enough. Like Saints Row 3 is like the perfect sweet spot of ridiculous, but not too ridiculous. The writing is amazing. Yeah, the giant dildo 
as the melee weapon, you can't go wrong. Saints Row 3 is great. If you haven't played it, you, got, you have to. The character designer is also amazing. Here's the essence of Saints Row 3. The character designer, you can make yourself a male bodybuilder with a tramp stamp tattoo and thong tan lines, which is obviously how I play all the time with like pink capri pants with the whale tail like thong tan lines and uh, Britney Spears newsy hat and the tramp stamp poking out. That's how I play every... Is there another option? If there's another option, I don't want it. That's the only way I want to play. The game is incredible. Um, if you've never played it, trust me, you're missing out. It is sublime. It is a sublime experience. You're missing out if you have not played Saints Row 3. It's incredible. You can see it's on the same level as New Vegas. S tier game. I'll hear nothing else just how it is this is gonna be a controversial one i know a lot of people are gonna disagree with me on this what do you guys think of breath of the wild you're giving it a 10 that's what you think a 10 i gotta say i don't think breath of the wild is great i don't think it's great i don't think it's goaded i think it's okay but i don't think it's great there's nothing to do exactly the graphics are gorgeous all the mechanics are cool but it feels unfinished to me like the world is kind of empty. There's no like personality, you know, it's just, it feels like they didn't finish the game. The quests kind of suck. Yeah. The items breaking sucks. All the, the palaces, I forget what they call them, the palaces or whatever. The dungeons all suck with the puzzles. I just, I don't like it. Yeah. I think Link to the Past was better. I don't think Breath of the Wild is a bad game by any means, um, but I, I really... I think it's very, very overrated. I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this one. I know it. I'm going to be crucified for this, but uh, I would say I would put it uh, on the same tier as Horizon Zero Dawn. I think Breath of the Wild is a C tier game. I know. Controversial take. I know. But I think it's a C tier game. It's a good game, but a horrible Zelda game. I can respect that, but I just don't think it's, I, it doesn't feel finished to me. Doesn't feel finished. Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Okay, that's a good one. I could do a whole tier list of Tony Hawk Pro Skater games. I will say Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 for Dreamcast is my personal favorite because it has the best graphics. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 to me is too fast. By Tony Hawk 4, it was like way too like goofy and like sort of not grounded in skateboarding anymore. Tony Hawk 1 is good, but it's just sort of 2 is better in every way. The soundtrack, at least 2 is the better version of 1, basically. There's nothing that Tony Hawk 1 does better than 2. 3 and 4, to me, are where it sort of started to get a little bit too much for me. Certainly not bad games. I know a lot of people love 3 and 4, uh, but for me, I would say that uh, 2 is the best game in the series. I would call that an S tier game. I would say uh, Tony Hawk 3 is a fine game, but to me, it gets a little bit overly complicated and too fast. I would call that one an A tier game. Certainly not bad, but not as good as two in my personal opinion. Just me. How about, uh, okay, I got another controversial one. I feel like I'm not even allowed to say the name of this game because it's so, everyone's so upset about this game right now. Like everyone is pissy about Hogwarts Legacy and like you're not even allowed to say the name of the game or you're canceled and they come for you. I don't pay attention to any of that stuff. I don't know, but I did get the game and I was very excited about it because uh, I loved Harry Potter, of course, because Harry Potter is great. I do think JK Rowling is a bit cringe. I will say that. Whether she hates trans people or not, I don't know, but she certainly, she kind of acts like it, to be honest. I do think she's kind of a transphobe, if I can be honest. I really do think she is kind of a bigot, uh, unfortunately. And uh, that said, I'm still willing to play the game, because why not? I don't give a shit. It's not even really a Harry Potter game. It's a Hogwarts game. And finally, I felt like we were going to get the chance to play the Harry Potter game that we had all dreamed of for 20 years, the game we all wanted. I gotta say, I felt like the game was a little bit of a letdown. It's not bad, it's good, but the game, I was, I wanted it to be like Elden Ring, and it's not. It's really more like an Ubisoft game. It's more like Assassin's Creed or something like that than it is Elden Ring or GTA. It's not like, it is an open world game, but it's kind of, 
shallow. It kind of feels unfinished to me. It's too bad because the world is absolutely amazing. The writing is great. The graphics are great. Um, it's just the game itself is kind of shallow. You just run around and like collect stuff for the sake of collecting stuff. You know, it's kind of like... It's just okay, and I'm disappointed because I really wanted to love it. I was very excited for it. I wanted to love it, but uh, I don't. And I paid 70 bucks for it, which sucks because games are so goddamn expensive now. I can't believe that games cost 70 bucks. So especially if you consider how expensive it is, I feel like it's a C-tier game. I'm sorry. I would rather play Skyrim than Hogwarts Legacy. I'm sorry. It's not bad but it's not great. Okay, let's talk about GTA. I would say that, uh, yeah, probably San Andreas is probably my favorite of them, and I, I haven't ever finished any of them, but uh, San Andreas. I will say GTA, it's another one of these games that I really want to like more than I actually do like because the gameplay itself, I don't think is that good. The world is amazing. The writing is amazing, but like, the driving and shooting kind of suck. Like, they're not actually that fun to me. Uh, I love the world. The writing is great. Like, all the, you know, activities and stuff are cool. But I don't actually think the gameplay itself is that great. You know what I mean? I feel like maybe if you're 12, it seems amazing. Yeah, and at the time, they were cool. But it's just... I don't know. It's not as good as I wanted it to be. I liked it, for sure but I don't love it. For me personally, just the driving and the shooting, not nearly as good as the world building and the vibe. So still a good game though. And I would rather play it than Skyrim because at least it has personality. So I would say it's an A tier game. The gameplay is not as good as Fallout or Saints Row, but it's close. And the personality, definitely a lot better than Skyrim. So that's what I would say. Not bad. Let's see, what else? What else do we have? Oh, Cyberpunk. Okay, that's a good one. I feel like people are going to hate me for these scores that I'm giving these games. Cyberpunk 2077 is a game that I was looking forward to for years and years and years and years. Because I remember Cyberpunk when it was an actual like pen and paper game way back in the 80s. That's how old I am. <laughs> I remember the OG Cyberpunk pen and paper RPG. And obviously the graphics looked amazing and all the trailers. Like everything about this game made me think I was going to love it. The systems looked really deep. And then I played the game and I don't even, I don't even care about the bugs like that. The bugs don't bother me. What I don't like is that the actual game is very shallow. The world is not nearly as interesting as it looks. The world is beautiful, but there's nothing to do. Like there is no reason to walk around the world at all. The missions kind of suck. Like the writing is good. The writing is very good, but like the missions suck. You just like go to this building and like kill everybody, collect a bunch of loot that's not better than what you have. Or like you get like 25 guns that you just sell. And then you like go back and do the next mission. You know, it's like, it's not a fun game unless you're playing just for the writing, which might as well be like a visual novel. Yeah, I just, I just don't think it's great. It's not bad, but I definitely don't think it's great. It's very, very overhyped. And again, I'm not even talking about the bugs. I don't care about the bugs. I can put up with the jank. I mean, obviously I have Fallout New Vegas is an S tier game for me. So I don't care about the jank. You know what? I'm going to put Cyberpunk in the F tier. I'm going to do it. Fuck it. I'm putting it in the F tier. I think it sucks. I would never play it again. A oh, Witcher 3. Okay. Since we're talking about open world games, this is another game that uh, everyone said was the best thing of all time. And I remember like the older Witcher games, like the Witcher 2 and stuff, getting, um, getting a lot of hype and everyone said how great it was. I never played the older Witcher games, but I did get the Witcher 3. I was certainly impressed with the graphics. The writing is cool. The quest design is pretty good. What's the one? The Bloody Baron, I think. That's like the quest everyone likes, right? That one was really cool. But to be honest, I, I, the gameplay to me is kind of shallow. The combat sucks. The like system with the potions and stuff just wasn't really that fun to me. You know, it just, it didn't feel like a very deep game. There's way too much shit in the world. It's so one of the, it's kind of like reminds me of these Ubisoft games. There's like, whatever, there's like a hundred monster nests. And so the map is just like filled with question marks, but None of the stuff outside of the main quest to me is even interesting, you know? Yeah, and I don't think Geralt is very, or Geralt, however you say his name, I don't think he's a very interesting character either. So 
I don't think The Witcher sucks, but I don't think it's as great as I was sort of expecting it to be or as great as people sort of talked about it. I would put it on the same tier as Skyrim. Certainly good, but, you know, falls short of greatness in my personal opinion. Okay, fine. We'll talk about Elden Ring. Elden Ring, I gotta say, it is rare these days that I find a game that I like fall in love with. When I played Elden Ring, I immediately was like, Goo Goo Gaga, head over heels, like completely in love with Elden Ring. I don't know, I put in 80 hours into the game or something like that, which I never do. Like I very rarely play games now because they're, I don't know, just they don't measure up to me. Elden Ring, just fucking incredible. Everything about it was just amazing. Yeah, it's one of the all time best games ever made. Just the creepy vibe, the art direction, um, it's just, it's so deep. There's so many secrets. It's definitely hard, but it doesn't feel like unfair. I don't know. Elden Ring to me, an absolute masterpiece. I feel like they should have ended the game at like the fire giant. After you get past like the city, the capital city, I feel like that part of the game, the end of it is definitely not as good as the beginning, but still a great game. Any way you want to look at it. I think it's one of the best games ever made. And, uh, if you don't agree with me, you are a piece of shit with bad taste in everything, and we are not friends. We cannot be friends if you don't think Elden Ring is an S-tier game. I think people are still going to be playing this one in 20 years because it's that good. Just absolutely incredible. So deep. So good. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love everything about it. Here's a real nerdy one. For the turbo nerds in the crowd, has anyone played Caves of Quud? Anybody played this one? This is just like top tier turbo nerd shit. This is a roguelike indie game, which is super fucking weird, super hard, super confusing. Yeah, it's a real roguelike. This is an extremely autismal game. <laughs> it's like on the level of like Dwarf Fortress, maybe not quite as deep and nerdy as Dwarf Fortress, but it's close. This is what the entire game looks like. It is totally unfriendly and impenetrable. This is what the world map looks like. So if this kind of thing looks interesting to you, if you're the sort of turbo nerd that likes this kind of thing, Caves of Quad is as good as it gets. It's fucking incredible. One of the creepiest games I've ever played. The fact that it looks like this and still like it has more like vibe than I would say it's up there with Elden Ring in terms of like vibe for some reason even though the graphics are totally primitive and there's hardly even any real story the vibe is just untouchable it's a fucking incredible game I would very 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 highly recommend that you play it if you're a turbo nerd that you know is into roguelikes I think it's incredible I can't quite put it on the S tier because there's some parts of it that are kind of rough around the edges and it's technically still in early access but certainly an A tier game Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Hotline Miami. Okay, that's a good one. I liked this game quite a bit. I suck at it because it's really hard. But if you're not familiar, Hotline Miami is like a overhead, like shooting kind of game like this. But you die constantly. Like you might die every like five seconds or something in Hotline Miami. And you just kind of got to learn like the rhythm of the levels. But it has really, really cool music by this guy named Perturbator like synth, really dark synth wave kind of music. It absolutely did. It, it exploded the career of several synth wave musicians. It absolutely did. Super hard, super gory, super dark. It's like, imagine like uh, GTA Vice City in terms of vibe, except with way more like serial killer vibes and less humor. It is super frustrating, super great aesthetic. It's a cool game. It's a little bit too difficult for me to like, enjoy playing per se but i can recognize that it's a very good but flawed game so for that reason i would put it on the b tier really cool vision but doesn't really quite turn into like a great game for me but i still think it's a cool special game and i like it just not something i would necessarily choose to play again if that makes sense i got time for one more i think if you have ever dreamed about having your own quiet little farm on the outskirts of town and marrying some sweet farmer's daughter after bringing her pumpkins for a year well then you're gonna like stardew valley because that's what it is it's a, a farm sim 
It's basically, it's not exactly a knockoff of Harvest Moon. It's more like they took what Harvest Moon was doing and made it even better. And uh, it's a great game. It gets a bit repetitive for me because every day, basically, you have to like go do farm chores, like, you know, pick vegetables or go down in the dungeons and like, you know, harvest, uh, harvest minerals and stuff like that. So it, it gets a little bit repetitive to me, but it is an absolutely great game. It's better than Harvest Moon, to be honest. And they've continued to update the game for what, like 10 years or something like that? My wife played the shit out of this game. She played it a lot more than I did, actually. If you're into this kind of thing, it's the best game in the series for sure. No question about that. And uh, made by a very small team. I think it's a great game. Would I rather play Stardew Valley or Caves of Quad or Tony? I, I, for me, I'm going to put it on the B tier, although I feel like that's unfair because it's it's a great game. But for me, would I rather play Stardew Valley or GTA San Andreas? I would rather play GTA, uh, even with the imperfections. So there it is. My personal video game tier list. You know, take it or leave it. Just my opinion. But we'd love to know what you think. And uh, if you don't like Elden Ring, we cannot be friends. Those are the facts. Those are the facts, people. So if you don't like Elden Ring, consider us unfriended right now. You're not going to my top eight.